following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to uh, Marty in Worcester, Mass. Hey, Marty, what's going on? Hi, hi, Mr. O'Brien. Got a quick little thing here. Yeah? Uh, it's called Patience and Perseverance. Okay. Uh, patience. I heard of God is yelling, the magic silent word, and me thinks I must be smelling. Pokey money round the world. Perseverance. When markets royal like stormy seas, good traders seek safe port. In financial times like these, you need Tom O'Brien's gold report. You had too much fun. Man, that is so cool. Well, listen, man, I really appreciate that. Now, Tom O'Brien. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the May 13th wonderful Wednesday edition of today's closing bell on the Tom O'Brien Show. I'm your guest host, Steve Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great afternoon. Let's make sure that you and I do everything we can to have an extraordinary evening. Of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I, we make that one little shift, that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to throw at us. We're going to go check out the circumstances of the uh, markets out here. I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here this afternoon. I'm here to serve you, so feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Of course, internationally, we'd love to hear from you as well at 727-445-1044. This is Wonderful Wednesday. Of course, it's Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got the uh, Dow up six points. She's trading out at 18.073. S&P up one full point, trading at 2,100. Almost even, Stephen, out there. The composite up 10 points at 49.86. Russell 2000 is just above the uh, flat line, up 30 cents, trading at 12.33. Well above the flat line is Goldilocks. She's trading up 22 bucks. We'll see what that's trading into. That's uh, priced out at 12.14. Silver up 60 cents. That's trading at 17 dollars and 11 pennies. Lightspeed crude back 52 cents. Uh, she's trading at 60.24. Lead the charge. The upside out here this morning. You got Zebra Technology this afternoon, I should say. Zebra Technologies, Rent Track, Williams Partners, Acuity Brands, uh, Puma Biotech. CF Industries, Wabco, and Martin Marietta. Lead the charge at downside. ResMed, Bluebird, uh, Ducomun, uh, Ducomin, that's uh, DCO, down 19%. Granger, worldwide, easy uh, chip. Nothing easy about that stock chart, down 26%. Biogen, off five bucks. Amazon, off five dollars. DuPont, down five as well. So this has to be a, a fun market to uh, for you to be traded into. It's basically done not a whole heck of a lot out here. But let's go see what it actually is doing. Let's try to uh, let's start off with the currencies. Let's start off with a couple things that are moving, see what they're doing. Let's start off by taking a look at the euro U.S. dollar. We talked about this early this morning. We took a look at the, the, set, at the descending price channel. Uh, price, uh, we suggested that price was going to make its way up. And, of course, we suggested that yesterday. We saw the uh, euro starting to move higher. Price has hit the top of that rising price channel, hasn't closed above it, so to speak. Really, tomorrow's trading, the next day's trading, will let us know whether this is going to uh, break out and then move into the 117 area. Right now, it's trading at 1.1358, 1 1 or right around that uh, area. And that is on the euro, U.S. dollar. Of course, as that trades higher, the U.S. dollar index will pull back. That's what we've got going on because you've got a correlation, 57% of the weighting structure inside of the U.S. dollar index is attributable to the euro. Maybe it's 57%. It's somewhere right around there. And uh, nonetheless, it is the heavier weighting, the heaviest weighting with inside that. Where's U.S. dollar index go? Tell you the truth, we won't know until we know what the euro does at this uh, descending channel line. Now, chances are that uh, price is going to go ahead and pull back from here. 
and it'll pull back from here uh, because it hasn't been able to break out for a long period of time. But if it does, boy, that's how you really start to see a, a confirmed change in a trend versus a counter trend bounce out there. So we want to keep an eye on that. Great British Pound, Great British Pound on its way up to what, the 160 type area out here. It's got a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD at 160. Very likely the Great British Pound will head up to the 163 price point. As this moves higher, that puts some weakness inside of the U.S. dollar index. So if the uh, Great British Pound's moving higher, if the euro actually takes out the resistance level of its uh, descending price channel, I can promise you one thing, the U.S. dollar index will be pulling back regardless of what the Japanese yen wants to do. At this stage here, the Japanese yen has been getting a bit stronger, so that's been putting a little bit of strength, even though you don't see it inside the U.S. dollar index. But while it's been pulling back here, it's actually adding a bit of strength. The other currency pairs that you got to take a look at are the, really the Canadian dollar. Then beyond that, you've got the uh, Swiss Frank and the Swedish Corona. And I'm not talking about, although I wouldn't mind a Corona with a nice little lime in there, but that would be a Mexican Corona. What a nice, I didn't celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Can we uh, celebrate Cinco de, uh, let's see, how do you say 13 out there? DSA, DSA Trace, is that possible? Did I get that right out there? Maybe we can say today's the 13th, is it not? Yeah, we ought to celebrate uh, that, uh, get a couple of those beers in here. Okay, I know you didn't uh, you didn't turn in to listen to that, but that's what's going on inside the currency pairs. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Let's go take a look at the hard currency pairs. How about Goldilocks out here? What is gold doing? Seems like it's off to the races. I mean, it's up $21, for goodness sakes. It's actually broken above. The current TAS market profile high, that resistance level of 12, 10, 30 out here. But gold basically has done diddly out here. It has hardly done anything since, the, you know, the reality is it hasn't done much uh, since uh, March 20th. It's been trading in a sideways consolidation range uh, between the levels of, we'll call it 1175 up to about uh, 1220. So you're looking at what, uh, 25, uh, 25, about $45 move. That says if, in fact, gold is able to break above, close above the high from April 6th, that's at uh, 1224. You know, you can add that uh, type of uh, move, uh, measured move to the upside inside of gold. But let's go see what gold actually is doing here in the short run. Uh, let's take a look at a 30-minute chart out here. We looked at this this morning as the A to B equals CD pattern was unfolding. We knew that uh, as gold was hitting the one-to-one -one level, as it was doing that at 9 o'clock, it got up to 12.05. We knew it was coming in with a wide-ranging bar that says, what's it going to do next? Continue up to the next level. In the case of the lightning bolt pattern, that's your 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD. Of course, it hit that with a widest ranging bar. Then it's got time to move on to the next level. Well, it did that. In fact, it did that with a wide ranging bar as well. So gold made the 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD. Did it with some volume. So far, what gold is just doing is moving sideways to work off an overbought condition. This is on a 30-minute time frame basis. You can see it zoom, zoom, zoomed into that overbought condition. The most bullish thing that gold can do is, in fact, move sideways to work off an overbought condition. That says that the uh, next run ought to be up to that 12, 23, 90, or 1 to 2, A to B equals CD pattern inside of the 30-minute chart. Well, if we go back to the daily, that says then that gold should at least come back out here and test that high from April 6th. That's 12, 24, 50. The question is, is that going to be the extent of the move when it comes to uh, Goldilocks out here? I don't know. I am not yet convinced that this is a, a real breakout here in gold because it's just simply been traveling in the sideways consolidation zone for a long time, a long time. Hey, let's go down the street to uh, Tampa to uh, Joe. Joe, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning or this evening, good. this afternoon? Doing? doing good. Good. I just have to get my – I'm so used to, to doing the morning shows that I've got to get my day set here. So yeah. uh, good afternoon to you. Uh, dry you. ships is what you want to take a look at. Tell us what you're doing, how I can help you. Well, I got it in at 74 cents when I was just didn't know to, if it looked like a good hold or a... So you're in at 74, okay. Uh -huh. And um, with the, the time frame, when you entered that trade, what was your time frame horizon? You know, tell me what your plan was. Let's see if there's any any change to that plan that, that you should consider. Uh, no, no big, I mean, just to see see what happened with it, I'd like to go up, you know, 90 cents or so, but... All right. Well, well. first, I want to say congratulations on the trade. You're in the money. So that's a beautiful thing. It's trading right now right. at 81 cents. Uh, here's what we can say about uh, dry ship. So so <clears throat> this is a is a really short-term trade, would you say? Uh, yes. 
It is, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, last year um, was 290, I think it was like 280 something last year at this time. Yeah, it's been a lot of volume today. I just didn't know if something was going on with it or. Well, okay, so that's a good question. Let me see here. Uh, dry ships, um, nah, I don't have anything in the news here with regard to uh, dry ships. So, um, you know, it is, uh, I did come off of the. Uh, off of these lows here relatively nicely yesterday, 7.4 million shares. Today, you've got additional volume. You know, that's certainly how you like to see something coming off of a uh, bottom out here. The, the reason why I asked about your time frame and, you know, your entry is 74 cents. That looks pretty good. This should have pretty darn good support for you at the price point of 65 cents. So... You know, hopefully you're you're not overly weighted in this from a position size standpoint. Uh, can I can I Joe? Can I ask you to hold on through this break here? We've got to go sell some commercial time. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Then we'll go back to Joe. We'll take a look at where dry ships could be headed to and give Joe some uh, some additional information about dry ships. We'll go take a look at. I'll take a look at Diana shipping during the breakout here. We'll be back. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800 851 -0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. 
John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back to the Tom O'Brien Show, folks. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom. The uh, Dow's off 17 points. The S&P is down two. Uh, we're on the phone with uh, Joe from Tampa. We're taking a look at uh, dry ships. Uh, you know, Joe, during the breakout here, I took a look at a couple of different things on the uh, chart here for dry ships. Now, the, the bullish thing, there's really, let me give you a couple pieces of the uh, bullish piece of the scenario here. One of my favorite patterns to uh, trade is when a uh, equity, a commodity, whatever time frame it is you're trading makes a, a stretched pattern to the uh, downside in the case of dry ships it made one of those patterns back here on the trading day of uh, april 30th it did that by making a, a seventh wave move to the downside part of the chapman wave count out there typically you're going to see the uh, market when it does that it's so stretched that it will go ahead and uh, move in the opposite direction it makes the trade pretty easy because your your stop on any trade just needs to be one tick or in this case here one penny below the uh -huh. low of that so that's a beautiful thing. At this stage here, if we start, so that's one thing. Secondly, uh, as you pointed out, over the last couple of days, we've had volume increase as it's come off that bottom. So that's pretty nice. Now, that volume is being, is being met with a little bit of uh, selling from folks that uh, thought that dry ships had made a bottom at around the price of 84 cents and uh, maybe 86 cents out there. There was volume of about 10 million shares on each of those trading days. And so that's really what you're running into right now. Those folks are just glad they get their money back because when they saw dry ships get down to 65 cents, they were like, oh, shoot, what do I do now? Right. So, you know, so you're running into a little bit of that agitation. Um, and that's why I was really trying to get at where is it that you, you know, you think you want to, what's your time frame horizon on this trade and so forth. Um, it, if this ever pulled back to the breakout area, which would be somewhere between the price point at, say, of uh, 71 cents to 74 cents, personally, I'd want, and it was coming back in light volume, I'd want to go ahead and, you know, and take a trade on that. So uh -huh. I don't know where your stop is at, but you're running into a bit of resistance, you know, a little turbulence as if you're flying in an airplane. But once this thing can clear, we'll call it 88 cents, there is no reason uh, that uh, this equity can at least try to get back up into the uh, trading day of December of last year, um, you know, which would really about the be about the dollar thirty six level out there. So I think that's probably your best case uh, type scenario out here. Uh -huh. um, you know, as far as as far as what I see that's going on inside the equity out there, is there any other question that you might have that now after I've well, provided? I, I, I just seen that the the earnings came out for the quarter, last quarter, and it had lost. Uh, uh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it lost so much. No, I think it was nine cents a share. I don't know if yeah. that's anything, or if they were expecting more, and only lost nine cents or. You know yeah, you know, during during the break, I also went ahead and I looked at uh, Diana Shipping, DSX is the uh, ticker symbol, which is the stronger of the uh, shippers out there, certainly compared to uh, dry ships. I wanted to see if that had any real volume in it today and yesterday, and it didn't. So, you know, that doesn't mean anything. I was, I was, I was looking to see, you know, is a sector taking off or something along those lines. Right, right. You know, and I, I didn't see that out there. So uh, that just said to me, just come back and take a look at the dry ships uh, chart for you. Uh, which is, you know, I would say the other thing you could do is take a look at what's going on with the uh, with inside the sector, um, okay. you know, to get a feel for whether or not you should just take your money or, or what you ought right. to do with this trade. All right. I appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks so much for calling. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. That was Joe in Tampa. That was dry ships that we were taking a look at. I had a request to go take a look at uh, – at the S&P and my short-term thoughts on uh, where the S&P is going into the close. So let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at, let's start here. I want to start with the uh, NASDAQ out here. I want to start with the uh, NASDAQ because it's got enough strength to really hold things up and what's going on inside the NASDAQ. And if whether or not we're going to really see anything go on inside of the, uh, inside of the market going into the close. 
We're looking at a five-hour chart for the S&P. This is for the s and I'm sorry, for the NASDAQ futures out here. And yesterday morning, you may recall, you know, you, you turned on the news. Uh, you turned on the uh, see what's going on inside the market. The futures were down. Uh, the NASDAQ specifically, the Dow was down, you know, 150, 60, 70 points, something along those lines. And then, boom, all of a sudden, the uh, bulls came in and uh, started buying up the market. Now, what that did, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, you're taking a look at these blue uh, whores or diagonal lines on my uh, screen out here and as a uh, price moved higher uh it, it's created this little rising price channel we've got two competing channels out here now at this stage here price has not dropped below the bottom of that uh, even tested the bottom of that little blue line out there that bottom of that rising price channel so it's not as if we've got any kind of signal that the market has fallen apart i will say this it is the sellers that still have control of this market as we speak. It shows you that they don't have exactly a lot of ammo, that they've got a lot of um, a lot of pizzazz behind their move out here. Now, the reason that I say that sellers are in control of the market, I'm just coming right back here to the composite itself, the actual cash indice out here, is I'm taking a look at the, at the summation index and the price oscillator. The price oscillator is the bottom portion of my screen here. Now, typically what happens, once they break through this descending trend line, that's this little red diagonal line on my screen, they broke through that back here on uh, May 7. What the NASDAQ has done in the past is every time it's broken through that descending top line, it's gone on to make a new high or at least test the highs out here. We're quite a ways away from that taking place. And there's been a couple of times, interest session, uh, where the uh, composite, uh, as, the price, as price had moved up, where the uh, bulls would have been able to take control. The buyers would have been able to take control. Uh, every time that that has gotten up there, we've seen a bit of a sell-off. So what this is telling me or what I'm explaining to you is just simply that sellers really have the upper hand. Just like what Joe and I looked at inside dry ships, we were able to go back and take a look at a line of supply of people who had gotten in on that equity. They thought they were buying the bottom. Uh, dry ships went, you know, 20 cents lower or something, and they're just like, uh, you know, please, they're they're grateful to get that 20 cents back. You know, maybe they did, maybe they maybe they, they got into a trade and they didn't pay attention to position sizing out there. Figured, hey, it's an 80 cent equity. I'm going to just go ahead and buy thousands of shares out there because it's priced so little. This is a math exercise. This is not about, uh, and it's always about only risking 1% of your working capital, you know. And what that means, just so that I'm very clear on that, Whatever the working capital is you have, whether it's 10000 or it's $50 million, you just simply take 1% of your working capital. On $100,000, 1% of your working capital is what? It's $1,000. That's all that you would risk on any trade. As far as how many shares you buy, you figure out what your stop is going to be. You take that $1,000, you divide it by your stop. If it's uh, 20 cents, you just simply divide that $1,000 by 20 cents. That tells you how many shares you can buy of an equity. That's one portion of the uh, formula. Then you've got to take a look at it and say, hey, this is how many shares. This is what I'm spending per share. And is this more than, if it's individual equity, is this more than 10%? of my total holdings. If it is, you probably have uh, still have too many shares out there. But that's really how you, it doesn't, the price of the equity that you trade, whether you have 10 shares or 1,000 shares, should be irrelevant. It's always about the only thing that you and I can control, which is risk, which is the money management piece of it. But right now, what I can say is that inside of the uh, NASDAQ composite and inside the New York Stock Exchange, here's the price oscillator, here's the summation index, and this is below zero as well. And that says that it is still the seller that have control of the market. And therefore, what does that mean to both you and I? Well, in the 4 o'clock hour yesterday, I shared this chart with you, so I'll go ahead and share it with you uh, during the uh, 3 o'clock hour, and that is this. Ah, you're going to have to wait till we come back from the break. How is that for a strategic pause as we come in to this break here at uh, 329 in the afternoon? When we come back, I'll show you what is likely to happen over the course of the next uh, several days out here. We've got the Dow off 15, S&P down 1. We'll be right back, folks. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is 
powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank. Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back to the Tom O'Brien Show, folks. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom during the uh, first hour here. we got the uh, Dow up 26 points. S&P is down three. Composite is just slightly uh, positive out here. Hey, real quickly, back to that uh, question with regard to what's the thoughts on what the ES Mini is doing out here. If we just take a look at multiple time frames for the S&P futures contract, 30 minutes in the upper left, in the uh, center uh, to upper portion, the 60-minute uh, time frame, the upper right, 120-minute time frame, the lower left is 240, lower center, 300. Lower right is the uh, daily chart out here. This gives us a pretty good uh, feel for levels of uh, natural support are with inside the ES Mini. What you're going to find out is that as you take a look at these charts here, the uh, last bastion of hope for the uh, bulls with regard to price is just intraday that we're, that we're talking about is in this 2093 level. And that is the uh, support line inside the 120 minute chart on the very upper right hand side. Because as you take a look at all the other time frames, price is below any type of level of support, with the exception of the daily, which has run into resistance today, uh, at, which is up at the 2099 area. And this would suggest that 2080 four would be its level of support that it could seek. Now, are we going to see that during the next uh, 24 minutes of trading out here? I don't know. We could. But what I can say is that if a 2093 fails, then it would not be unusual uh, in the overnight trading or early tomorrow morning for you to come in and see price down around 2084. What I can say, if you see price below that area, then it's holy shnikes. And that means that uh, you can see price get down to even 2053. But at this stage here, the real battle is uh, was pointed out here inside the Tigers and the battle of 2093. Mike K is absolutely correct out here. But that battle exists basically on just one time frame and one chart. And that is the uh, two hour chart, the 120 minute time frame chart for the ES Mini. Now, what's likely to take place out here is, uh, you know, May. We're off to just a traditional normal start inside of uh, May. This has been going on in essence for 82 years out here. For 82 years during the month of May, that so-called sell in May cycle out here, what basically happens is we have a, a choppy market. Yeah, sometimes you get the uh, trigger happy sellers out there that just sell on April 30th. Um, and don't pay attention to the size of the declines out here. That's pretty much eerie. That's it's it's a, that's a that's not the way that you use this chart. The way you use this chart is almost more from a turn date uh, standpoint. Uh, and uh, what this says here today is May 13th. So if I take a look at where May 13th is at in this uh, chart, just to give you an idea, let's just go find out. May 13th is right here. So May 13th is right here where my little cursor is at. What do we have right down here at the very bottom, at the bottom of that uh, V? Well, that would be tomorrow. So this would say that uh, we ought to expect, let's just say that the 82-year cycle continues to work here. That says at some point in time, we ought to see this 2093 level get taken out and price move down to the 2081 area. Now, if, since it is really the 120-minute chart that's worked so well with regard to support levels today, I say that we still use that 120-minute time frame chart with regard to support levels for tomorrow as well. And that says that 2081 area ought to hold. So if uh, the market trades down into tomorrow, Let's not be surprised because that's just following what would be a normal pattern out there. If we take a look at some other uh, tools to just help us understand what's going on inside the markets right now, you have the uh, cash VIX index trading out at 1396, with the 50 day exponential moving average being 1417. When price is above that area, that's where you can see carnage begin inside of the market. When price is below that, you have a market that just simply grinds sideways to higher out here. Right now, it's below. So we have what we'll call conflicting signals out here inside of the market. And we do have conflicting signals because we've got that conflicting signal back on the currency side of uh, life out here. The currency side of life being the Euro-Japanese yen. In both the VIX and the Euro-Japanese yen, their best use in Stevie's opinion, is the use from a liquidity gauge out here. And when the Euro-Japanese yen is trading higher because it is a carry trade inside of the uh, market, it says that there's plenty of uh, dollars, whether they're euros, they're yen, or shekels out there, there's plenty of money to just simply go ahead and buy those dips. You wonder why uh, the, uh, you know, the, the market is finding support out here? Okay, you've got two liquidity gauges, the euro yen and the uh, VIX index, which is below the 50-day exponential moving average, and they're saying there's liquidity. That's that's really their their primary purpose. Not, look, 
The VIX index and the 50-day moving average, that is not the way that it was intended to be used by the, uh, by the, um, you know, the professors that uh, created that uh, VIX index. But you can go read about the VIX index and you can go find out exactly, you know, uh, what it's really traditionally used for. Um, and uh, that's great, but it doesn't really help you with regard to trading. Um, you know, what I determined a long time ago was that the uh, VIX index uh, really was best used by just taking a look at it with regard to the 50-day exponential moving average. And it had no bearing on what it was priced at. If a $49 VIX and it was priced and uh, VIX was trading below the 50-day exponential moving average, guess what? There was liquidity and money was going into the uh, markets out there. So that, in essence, is what is uh, going on with regard to uh, intraday basis on the S&P to help those that are, you know, trying to figure out what to do with trades, what to expect, what levels of support. We're in a market that is uh, choppy. It's best when your targets get hit to go ahead and take the uh, money off the table. So with regard to Goldilocks, I'm not that. Uh, it's been a nice $20 move out here, but I'm not that impressed that it is most certainly a uh, breakout inside the uh, market. If we take a look at some things that are uh, moving as well, uh, let's take a look at uh, Zebra Technology, Z-B-R-A. If we take a look at that, can we buy silver, Steve? You can do anything that you want. I'm not stopping you from buying silver. Let's take a look at Zebra Technologies. We'll go take a look at the silver. Uh, gold and silver basically going to trade the uh, same way out here. And, uh, boy, Zebra Technologies, this thing's on its way to 109.24, probably 114 or so. Uh, taking out a B point with volume today, big volume, 1.8 million shares, which is big volume for this equity. As far as the move in silver, the move in silver has been nice and strong. It has done a 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD. Uh, that is at a price point of 1726. Uh, silver now is uh, getting up into that swing point from March 26. Let's do this. Since uh, not everybody has the uh, contract, but let's let's uh, just simply go take a look at the GLD and the SLB out here. GLD. Let's go take a look at uh, gold, Spider Gold, the shares ETF out here. And let's go see what it's doing. The, it is trading into the swing point from April 6th. The low of that swing point is 116.52. You're at 116.54. Volume there was 5.9 million shares. You're into it with 10 million. So what that says, as long as the GLD closes inside 160, 116.52, 1652, you ought to at least go test the high of the uh, of the uh, GLD out there. And that's really what your expectation should be. Until that high gets taken out, which is 117.47, you don't have a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside or anything else out there. But it does say you close inside one. It says, look, it says if you close inside 116.52, you go test 117.47. Is it a guarantee? No, because this is really just tracking the other line instrument gold. So gold can do a whole lot of stuff at 3 and 4 and 5 in the morning. It can make its test fail and then the GLD doesn't have to do anything out there. So that's the problem when you're just simply trading the ETF. But in essence, that's what its message would be. If we take a look at the SLB, that is the iShares uh, Trust out here. Big volume inside of it. It has not taken out its uh, swing point out here. It's just traded. It's made 100% move a move is really what it's done. That's got volume of 6 million shares. You've done twice that today, 12 million. It's trading inside that uh, swing. That says that uh, price ought to, inside the SLB, go test 1657. But look, guys, the same thing is out here. You've made 100% move a move. You're making it with the volume out here. I mean, come on. If you were a person that believed that gaps got filled and gaps mean something out here, this is this is where it always gets a little dicey out here. And you'd say, shoot, you can't hold on to this thing. It's going to come back and fill the gap. Right? It's going to come down and uh, test that uh, 1587 or something along those lines. Look, this is a wide-ranging bar no matter how you slice and dice it out here. This has got accelerated volume. You're moving into the swing point. You haven't tested the high. It'll go test the high. The problem with that whole theory is the mere fact that these two things are underlying instruments for the contract. And it's really the contract that you've got to focus on. And so that test of that swing point high could be tested and failed this evening, uh, tomorrow, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock uh, before you can actually trade any of your ETF structures out there. And so we just have to come back and see what the uh, futures market is doing. We won't know until tomorrow. So that's going. That takes care of the uh, metals uh, area. Um, let's take a look at, um, you know, and this market has been, there's not, uh, thank goodness, that gold and silver actually have tried to uh, break out a bit today because, um, because uh, you know, there's not a whole lot more to talk about. The question is, will the gap get filled in GLD? The answer is, it doesn't have to. 
uh, GLD is just and they, the, the reason why you've got all these gaps in here is because they're just catching up to what's going on in the underlying instrument. So these gaps, quite frankly, inside SLV, GLD, UNG, DUNG, you know, you name it out there, any of those ETFs that track some type of commodity or track some type of currency pair, do you know what value they have to you? Totally, absolutely, positively zero. No value whatsoever. The gaps are just absolutely meaningless. Now, a gap inside of the commodity, that's a whole different thing. A gap inside the uh, currency pair, that's a whole different thing. But the reality is you're typically not going to get any gaps in those vehicles until you come in Sunday night at 5, a. At 5 p.m. when you start trading the currency pairs. 6 p.m. East Coast time if you start trading the uh, uh, the electronic uh, markets out there. You know, and that's after Friday's close because pretty much you don't get gaps inside of those underlying equities. This is Steve with TFN, and we'll be right back, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Do you know the seven most critical factors that influence every decision you make and how not knowing these will jeopardize the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve? I'm Steve Rhodes, morning host at TFNN.com, and for the last quarter of a century, I've studied and used the secrets of human growth, the same formulas used by leaders of nations, billionaires and millionaires, and the most successful athletes on the planet. Would you like to break through any obstacle that gets in between you and the success you deserve? Would you like to turn fear into strength? If you could find a way to achieve, be fulfilled, and live a life of meaning, wouldn't you want to know the answer? I'll teach you the factors that control your state of mind and the drivers that impact every thought, emotion, behavior, and action we take in my new webinar, The Psychology of Trading. Join me for this two-part online event where I'll unveil the secrets to human pattern recognition because they're not what you think. And soon, you'll have the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on The Psychology of Trading to begin your journey now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. 
Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back to the Tom O'Brien Show, folks. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom for the uh, evening. And I want to say thank you to uh, all of the individuals that have uh, signed up and have participated in my uh, workshop, The uh, Psychology of Trading, which is much, much more than just about the psychology of trading. Now, it's been really, uh, it's been really great over the last uh, week. Uh, the first workshop was last Thursday. The next one is going to be this coming Thursday. So even if you've missed it, you've got the ability to still sign up for it by coming over to the homepage at TFNN.com. You can watch the archive of uh, last week's uh, workshop, prepare for this one. Look, if you can't even be there, this is great to have on your members page for the next, uh, for the next uh, 30 days out there. What's really been cool is that uh, there's seven invisible forces that uh, shape uh, each of us, the decisions that we make, why we do the things that we do, you know, and what it is, it's really human pattern recognition, just like uh, each of us here, myself, uh, you know, Larry, Basil, uh, uh, David, uh, Tom, Andy, we're all taking a look at different patterns out there. We spend a lot of our time doing that inside of the uh, markets. And uh, what's really what's really great is to be able to do something beyond that, to really be able to do something that touches people and allows them to utilize uh, and understand something about themselves that they can carry forward for both their health, their wealth, and their relationships out there. So, uh, you know, join me, folks, if you're interested. If you're, you know, like if you're a person of growth, if you like to grow, if you like to contribute uh, out there, if you really like to uh, learn, this is going to be, it's 97 bucks. I mean, come on, that is nothing. It's a drop in the bucket. And I, what I promise is I'm going to teach you things that you had no idea. You did something that you absolutely is going to be brand new for you. And it's going to be tools that you're going to be able to use for a lifetime out there. So uh, uh, I do not know what's going on with the uh, system. They say some things are dropping in and out. There's not too much I can do about it. Uh, but uh, I think I'm on the air. Hopefully that I'm on the air out here. In any event, if I'm not, I'm just talking to dead space. So let's just kind of round out where we're at. Look, I think the expectation with regard to what the markets uh, may do tomorrow, if we take a look at that 82-year uh, history, would say that tomorrow ought to be a uh, down uh, day out here. But we'll see if that is the case. I gave you the parameters to uh, watch if you're trading the futures, what it is that you want to be uh, paying attention to out there. Um, with regard to uh, everything else, you know, we took a look at gold, silver. Uh, how do we want to finish out the uh, show out here? What's the what's the best way to finish off these these five minutes? I'm just trying to give you the most be, be as impactful as I can out here. And so I'm just uh, surfing around. You know, there's just, just there's just not a lot more to uh, provide to you other than what we've got right now. You know, that VIX index. We have just really conflicting conflicting pieces of information. We have we have liquidity that says there's plenty of liquidity to buy up all of these uh, dips out here, and 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 that's a consistent message across the board. Likewise, we've got uh, sellers that say I'm not willing to give up. So that's what's going on. That's why we're seeing the selling take place, and it's across the uh, board. Well, it's not across the board. It's in the uh, New York Stock Exchange. It is in the uh, 
NASDAQ composite. It is not inside of the uh, Dow out there. You know what we haven't done? We haven't gone to take a look at the ETF structure. And I know that uh, you probably enjoy Tom doing that. If we go take a look at the QQQ ETF series out here, what do we have? Basically a sideways, slightly higher day inside of the uh, QQQs. 18 million shares to the upside with six minutes to go in the trading session. What we want, what you and I really want in order for a nice top to uh, take place, we want to see six more of these trading sessions with 18 to 20 million shares out there. If we see that, then we'll have something that would set up a nice little top inside the marketplace. Now, six more trading sessions at 18 million. I don't know how likely we are to get that. That goes beyond uh, my thinking, but I'm just going to take things one moment at a time, one day at a time. Here's what we know about the Qs. They're trading inside their market profile, their TAS market profile. They're even set up to say that sellers are in control of this, but uh, those sellers need to be able to close below 106.11 in order to inflict any kind of damage inside of the QQQ series. Inside of the IWM, what we know about it is it basically has done nothing today it's moved sideways volume behind it 18 million shares but i'm more interested in the volume inside the queues than i am in any of the other etfs what we know about the iwm is it has not been able to bust out the lows and we last time had a test down here of the swing point with light volume and that was on may the 7th out there um, as far as the spies, we're going to see they're just trading in that horizontal trading range within its uh, TAS market profiles. What the spies did do today was they did test the bottom of the February 25th swing point that had 73 million shares. Well, shoot, with 74 million shares. You know, whenever you test a swing point, just like we looked at with the GLD, the SLV out there. In this case here, whenever you test a swing point, which the spies have done by pushing higher today, earlier in the day, they certainly have not pushed lower, and you test a swing point with volume, it says you're going to be back up there. So the message of the ETF structure inside the spy says, hey, I want to go back up there and uh, touch that again. Uh, so that's, uh, maybe that's what we see tomorrow morning out there. Maybe it's a little pop and a drop. Inside the diamonds out here, I believe the diamonds have also tested that uh, swing point they have, and there's case it is March the uh, 2nd. That only had volume of 3.2. 2 million shares. My goodness, see 3.5 million shares. So here's the deal. We're in a consolidating market out here. In my opinion, is the following. This is just simply my opinion. What goes on inside the uh, ETF structures for the diamonds, the IWM, the Qs, and the SPIs right now inside of this consolidation, they mean nothing. It means basically nothing out here because so much changes overnight um, that, uh, you know, this is the message right now that I'm giving you as of uh, the 4 p.m. close with regard to what it wants to do. But the reality is check back in with me tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock when we see how the futures are trading. We go take a look at whatever patterns are in play, and we can take a look at whether the move higher or the move lower is real, whether or not there's some kind of divergent pattern that suggests, hey, you know, let's not buy into this. Do we have the markets moving higher? And then we have the, uh, uh, we have in essence, the VIX index, uh, you know, through the uh, futures contract starting to move higher, and the uh, currency pair starting to give it up. And that's possible. That's really possible, because when we come take a look at what the euro's done, if this euro really runs into resistance up at the top of this uh, descending price channel out here, which it's running into right now, and it starts to pull back. Guess what? Because this is the numinator, the yen is the denominator, it's likely going to go ahead and say the euro-Japanese yen starts to pull back, and that could be a little bit of a headwind in order to, uh, you know, push the market down. Is the market going to croak or something like that? No, it is not going to uh, croak, not just yet. Uh, what you and I want to see in order for that to happen, quite frankly, is six more days of about 18 to 22 million shares inside the QQQs. Then it'll set up a, a real nice uh, trap out there. In fact, we want to see we want to see price just kind of drift up, just keep drifting and drifting and do it with light volume. You want light volume on that wall out there because if we get enough of those in a row, that is what sets the hook for nice market tops. And I'm not talking all-time market tops or anything like that, but at least something where we get out of the choppy range out here. We have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days, something like that in one direction uh, or primarily in one direction. And that's what we would really like to have inside the marketplace. So, folks, uh, stay tuned. Uh, it is not a uh, – I asked the question. I don't know if I got the answer. I was wondering if it was a grizzly, a panda bear, a black bear that was going to be doing the next show. Stay tuned, folks, because it's the best bear of all. It's the Polar Bear. Our man David White, nicknamed Polar, he'll be up next. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Come on over to the homepage of TFNN.com. Sign up for the Psychology of Trade. It'll be a great ride. And uh, tune in tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Have a great Wednesday, folks.
The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to uh, Nick in Tampa. Hey, Nick, what's going on? Tom O'Brien, it is an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. We appreciate you calling. No problem. Um, dude, I've been listening to your show for about two years now, and it has just been wonderful. I listen to you, Basil, Andy. You guys do an amazing job. Well, thank you so much. Um, we appreciate you growling and prowling out here with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> And this is Dave White sitting in for the one and only Tom O'Brien. I think he's back tomorrow. He's uh, out having dinner, or at least last night, with our, our friend Andy Heck. And I'm uh, waiting to get all the dirt from Andy. He's been very tight-lipped so far. I'm wondering if we have any uh, uh, kind of like bachelor party stories to go with it. But haven't heard anything yet. Anyway, it's another wonderful day. And, of course, I'm your... Uh, Soft, squeezably soft host, sitting in for Tom O'Brien on a market that has gone nowhere fast. We certainly had uh, a lot of promise for the bovine this morning. Uh, the market, uh, uh, the futures anyway, showed about five points higher. We opened 10 points higher. Uh, they pushed the market pretty much for the first 30 minutes until news came out. And that uh, was not good. And uh, we had kind of a retracement out here. As I look at options, at least uh, for the data last night, it continues to look like we have some kind of close around 2080 on Friday. At least that's what the option market makers are looking at. We closed once again under 2100 on the S&P cash. We again closed under uh, the uh, 5000 mark on the S&P. And, of course, uh, the one holdout out here is the uh, Dow, which we'll talk about in a second. But, uh, you know, we've got uh, always something going on here at TFNN. I always like to uh, open my shows with a little bit of history. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1846, the U.S. Congress overwhelmingly votes in favor of President Polk's request to declare war on Mexico in a dispute over Texas under the threat of the war, uh, of war, the United States had refrained from annexing Texas after the latter won independence from Mexico in 1836. But uh, we went to war in 1846 for Texas. And uh, that is the place my mother bored me. So Texas has, I will always be a Texan. So I'll always like that. Uh, but uh, I do digress. We'll go right into it. On the S&P 500, we closed out at 2,098, the NASDAQ at 4,981, and the Dow at 18,040. Uh, up a little bit on the NASDAQ, uh, down one or two points. What was it? Uh, down 64 cents on the S&P cash. Again, uh, we had uh, a little bit of news, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, for you gold bulls out here, the bovine uh, and uh, very radiant silver and gold Bulls had a good day out here, up uh, almost 2% in gold and 3.5% in silver. Gold closed out uh, at uh, 12.14 today. Silver, $17.11. Crude, little changed, $60.24, although it also tried to rally and ended up uh, kind of fizzling out by the end of the day. After the close tonight, and maybe we've got the data already, I see we have JCPenney already out, and it's up uh, a couple pennies. Uh, after the bell tonight, Cisco Systems, a digital ally, which is, of course, the company that makes uh, those uh, cameras for uh, police, uh, the on-body cameras. X1, a rather beaten-up 3D printer company. Uh, Shake Shack, which was up uh, two and a half bucks already, the rather new IPO out here. And uh, it's going to be interesting to get the first uh, blush on that, the first uh, after-hours reporting on what Shake Shack is doing. Don't expect a whole lot uh, change in that yet. And Bishop Holdings, plus others out here, will report those as we get the data. Uh, maybe people in the den will tell me when they come out. Of course, we're going to be looking in until tomorrow and before the bell. Uh, 
Problematically, we've got coals. Now, the reason I say problematically is that's pretty much where the market turned today, and that was sales and retail. Uh, uh, Kohl's is a major retailer. Uh, Perry Ellis, of course, the perfume T-shirt and uh, other uh, men's apparel company. I think it's all men's. I've never looked for Perry Ellis's and women's. Maybe they've got it. Uh, so a little bit of taste of retail in the morning, and uh, that taste uh, had the market in a spitting fit after that data came out this morning. After the bell tomorrow night, uh, probably some stocks that could move the market a little bit more. AMAT, Eagle Materials, Jack in the Box, King Digital, uh, Sina Corporation, and Symantec. So we still have a few earnings coming out uh, after the uh, bell. Of course, uh, before our markets ever opened, industrial production for China came out. Uh, they basically missed a little light. Uh, especially this was uh, disconcerting because of the four rounds of interest rate uh, uh, cuts that they've had seem to have not changed anything in China. Uh, while retail sales did jump 10% year over year, they were still way under the uh, push for 10.5% that uh, economists were hoping for in China. Uh, that made things kind of a little soft, and uh, I think there were China, most of the indexes there were off half a percent or so. Of course, the numbers here in the United States were not any better, and many uh, economists out here were rather troubled to see at least two rounds of retail numbers that should have been much better after everybody dunk, uh, dug out of the cold winter, uh, and it continues uh, to be uh, problematic. I, on my radio uh, show today, said that we start, are probably going to start hearing about the R word fairly soon, and that R word is recession, where basically even the most optimistic uh, U.S. estimates are for a percent and a half growth. My guess is those are probably even a little high, which means that uh, we could see a little dip maybe in the next two quarters. I'm not uh, saying that we're going to drop, you know, 3% or something, but I uh, would be surprised to see us tuck under and see uh, in the next six months maybe something like a tenth of a percent under natural growth. We need about 2% just to tread water, and that probably will be enough to keep uh, the Fed out of raising interest rates this year. But at the same time, without probably a QE, it will not help anything. Uh, this probably is welcome news to the Fed because they would love to see the, the market ring out the excesses uh, that we've had. I played this clip occasionally on my show. I played it today. I want to play it again today because this may be the most intelligent thing uh, that anybody's said in the last couple of months. So what we need is for markets to consolidate in the middle. Instead, markets go one way or the other. So when we have really good days, that actually makes Fed officials nervous. Right. Because, because really good days in the markets, you mean? Really good days in the markets because it takes prices beyond what's specified by fundamentals. They worry about excessive risk taking. Well, they, they worry don't like about down financial. Days either. And they don't like down days either, right? <laughs> so what, what we need is a period of consolidation. The trouble is that the markets won't stay in the middle. The markets will either be discouraged by very low rates and go into high risk taking or we'll switch the other way around. Anyway, uh, to me, that's it. Uh, we've got. Uh, uh, the market tends to be bipolar. Uh, I always like to say that it's kind of like that uh, uh, James, uh, uh, what's his name? I've seen fire and I've seen rain. James Taylor. Uh, kind of a bipolar view of the markets. Not a lot of reason to leave cash in uh, a stock if it's not going higher and not a lot of reason to sell the stock if it's not going lower. And that continues to be you know, either things are good getting better or bad getting worse. You don't have a lot of market participants that are saying, you know, I think the market's going sideways for a while. I'm just going to let my cash sit out there and stew. So the question is, do we get enough of those people out there? Cisco Systems out after the bell, not a lot of movement. It's off maybe a percent. So we're at least getting the first move out here. My guess is that we're going to know a lot more about Cisco after the 5 o'clock Eastern hour as they get into their conference call. The reason why is uh, just how the change of Mr. Chambers, who is leaving as the CEO, will handle the handoff and whether or not the current or the to be CEO is going to start working. Uh, my guess is that in that five o'clock hour, we're probably going to hear a little bit more about how the dollar, the strong dollar 
Kurt Cisco, even though the Internet of Things is making uh, business good at Cisco, uh, it's going to be kind of tough. My guess is, and generally the pattern is to see stocks when the CEO changes dip a bit because uh, CEOs, especially getting ready to go out the door, like to try to make sure everything looks as pretty as possible. And it's not uncommon to see a pullback or at least a small pullback as the new CEO takes care of uh, the problems that the old CEO left in place. Uh, not untoward and not unheard of, but uh, down just a little. So other things going on out here, eh, probably about it. You can always give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And if you're in the den, you can post a message and I'll try to answer it. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. 
Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And as we come back, uh, Shake Shack's out with earnings. I'm not going to get into it because, of course, this thing hasn't been around that long, but it is a recent IPO. Uh, up uh, four and a half bucks. Uh, it's, six, uh, it's what, $72.77. I take it that the earnings are okay. This thing's going to bounce around a great deal. Of course, most people thinking this is the reincarnation of Chipotle. My guess is that uh, this is going to follow the pattern of many of the IPOs in the restaurant business uh, as of late, which is you know, get about three, six months of decent weather out of it, and then they pull back to the IPO prices. This is going to be a long haul. This is going to be a marathon in Shake Shack, and it's not going to be something that uh, reveals itself or its true nature in just uh, the next couple of months. Uh, yeah, they're going to expand. Uh, the question is just how many of these big hamburger places can continue uh, Chipotle probably a little bit different because it really doesn't have a lot of strong competitors in its space. There are a lot of in and out burgers, a lot of other stuff out here. So Shake Shack, probably a little tougher to make a case for, but uh, certainly up uh, after the bell uh, to e this evening. But that's not uncommon because you're not expecting a great deal. Uh, for stocks uh, that uh, did have uh, interesting news today, uh, we look at DuPont. Basically, a proxy fight uh, didn't go the way of the people trying to uh, break up DuPont and make a lot of cash real quick on it. Uh, it was off about six and three quarters percent today. Uh, this is back testing its previous trend line and uh, why a lot of these uh, stocks with activists are so problematic. Anyway, it went back to and through most of the previous lows back to the December 16, 2014 low. Didn't quite hit that today, but my guess is we're going to get uh, into that fairly quickly. That's $68.54, but uh, quite a uh, haircut for uh, one of the Dow components out here. Another stock, which is the disaster du jour, which seems uh, after the bell we have uh, kind of one every night, uh, is Easy Chip. This uh, was off uh, some... 25% uh, closed at $14.84. Uh, you have to go back, I think, back to 2010 to see this low tested in Easy Chip. Uh, other stocks of interest out here, WPZ, uh, which is the Williams partner agreeing to be bought out. Uh, it is up 22% uh, on the day, closed out at $58.14. A lot of natural gas plays uh, uh, around that one. When we look at others, uh, we've got uh, PLL, which was another one that uh, I think it came out with a little bit of earnings. Nice gap up today to uh, out of the last couple of days, uh, but uh, it closed up yet another 4%. So some good news there. Retail continues to be weak with Ralph Lauren off 3% today at 129.20 for its closing price down to that previous low of 127.29 from the March 11th low. It's uh, about a buck higher than that, but had three times the volume at 3.2 million shares today. So quite a uh, quite a move out there. Zebra Technologies, another one, ZBRA. And uh, that closed at 106.75. It was up 14%. Uh, this one is a solid breakout and you can't, uh, you can't detract anything on this one. Zebra Technologies. I'd, can't remember what the uh, news was on it. Was it big earnings or what? But it uh, doesn't matter. This thing had volume. It broke above a previous trend line. It did it with a lot of volume and the kind of candle you want. If you're new to TFNN and price uh, volume trading, this is generally everything that you're looking for in the markets. Uh, but uh, 
I do digress. Uh, JP Morgan, eh, uh, Calmain Foods, uh, Calmain, uh, C-A-L-M. Uh, last night at about the 5, 5.30 hour, we found out that bird flu again had raised its ugly chicken head in the Midwest. Uh, I think uh, it was at Nebraska uh, that uh, a lot of cases uh, were uh, uh, basically uh, confirmed. Uh, and Calmine Foods is breaking out with significant volume based on uh, doing better and raising more volume on that end. Uh, to, to, yes, I'm digressing again. Uh, what else do we have out there? Zayo, uh, it was off uh, Zayo Group Holdings, Z-A-Y-O, was one of the other big movers out here today. Uh, that was off, uh, yeah, 6.5%, closed at $26.22. Uh, kind of a reversal, certainly a lot of volume. Uh, this thing's kind of trapped in a range, but that takes care of most of the big movers out here. Again, uh, the IBB was up on a drug for, or was it, uh, uh, not cirrhosis of the liver. It's, uh, uh, the, the disease where you, uh, cirrhosis, cerebral, yeah, can't remember right now. Anyway, uh, kind of strange that we didn't get a lot more pop out of the IBB uh, than we did today uh, in a little trading range. You would think that that news out last night uh, about, uh, I'll look it up during the break now. I'm just having a senior moment, as they say, uh, problematic. Uh, anyway, we've got uh, a couple of minutes. In the meantime, you can always give me a call at 877-927-6648. You know, you would and could make a very decent case, somebody that didn't ask, is it ready to roll over? You can make a very decent case that this thing has made its rollover. Not only that, but it had a nice little confluence area um, from its ABCs. Let's uh, get this down a little bit closer, maybe three months out here. Uh, it had a confluence area. That confluence area was fairly wide, but at the same time, that acts more like a congestion level. Uh, you wouldn't want to see this thing go higher. But uh, light volume today, actually, in the IBB. And after that news, uh, no, it wasn't hepatitis. It was, uh, uh, boy, it was that lung disease where basically it, uh, cere uh, cerebral. Hmm. I'm going to think about it again. Uh, but uh, to, to, what do we got? Yeah. Anyway, right up to the top of the confluence range, which was, uh, three, uh, yeah, $353.87. Speak through that at three fifty five, dollars but closed back in that what is a uh, congestion zone when it's this wide uh, for uh, that. But uh, you can make a nice case. It made it 618 retracement out here. And uh, if you were thinking about going short, uh, you've got a very tight range. You wouldn't want to close any higher than it closed today. Uh, to continue an ABC on the way down. If we look at that ABC down uh, and a, or a possible ABC down uh, in uh, the IBB, uh, that would take you to, uh, let's take a quick look at here, just uh, this smaller one out here. Uh, we'll use our A point at uh, 368.25. Our B point is the uh, low back here on April 30th. And if we use today as our C point, that sets up a ABC to for a one-to-one -to, -one to 317.51, which is pretty decent uh, support area. So you've got a pretty nice little setup out here. There are a couple of gaps also in that level right at uh, 320, 315. And I suspect that's what you would want to be looking at for your taking your cash uh, out here is that, uh, yeah, low back out here, yeah. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute. Give me a call, 877-927-6648, and email me at path at tfnn.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. 
The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Do you know the seven most critical factors that influence every decision you make and how not knowing these will jeopardize the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve? I'm Steve Rhodes, morning host at TFNN.com, and for the last quarter of a century, I've studied and used the secrets of human growth, the same formulas used by leaders of nations, billionaires and millionaires, and the most successful athletes on the planet. Would you like to break through any obstacle that gets in between you and the success you deserve? Would you like to turn fear into strength? If you could find a way to achieve, be fulfilled, and live a life of meaning, wouldn't you want to know the answer? I'll teach you the factors that control your state of mind and the drivers that impact every thought, emotion, behavior, and action we take in my new webinar, The Psychology of Trading. Join me for this two-part online event where I'll unveil the secrets to human pattern recognition because they're not what you think. And soon, you'll have the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on The Psychology of Trading to begin your journey now. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary perspective Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Well, don't have a lot moving out here after the bell. We've got uh, Shake Shack up about seven bucks. But not uh, unexpected. A lot of people already short that stock. and Not a lot of float 
If you've missed my speeches in the past years about sliver deals, this is where you get a ton of shares. Let's say that you go public and you have uh, 10 million shares. You only put 1 million shares out there and leave 9 million on the shelf that you can put out later as time goes by. And that means that the float is very thin and it's heaven or hell when it comes to earnings. And uh, it looks like a little bit of heaven for Shake Shack after the bell tonight. Uh, we were talking about a stock I could not remember before the bell, uh, before the uh, break, and that was Vertex Pharmaceuticals, VRTX. This is the one that popped, and I didn't have time to really follow it today. Uh, pretty big reversal out here, but they did have the cystic fibrosis drug, which uh, won approval, and it was closed all day yesterday if you're looking uh, at that uh, almost zero movement and zero volume from yesterday. Uh, all the uh, volume was pre-market on that. But uh, kind of interesting to see that thing pop and then reverse out here today. Uh, but I want to thank uh, one of our kind listeners uh, who uh, emailed me. We had some other ones. Uh, Ron wanted to know what was going on in FireEye. Of course, as the tech expert here, kind of like uh, this company. But again, uh, what you want to be watching for in a lot of these stocks is the exact same pattern We've talked about many times out here, uh, and uh, this is making the same one as Apple, which is uh, lower highs and lower lows uh, into an asymmetrical triangle pattern. Uh, there is more rumors out here, uh, and uh, I guess the idea is they're being bought out, uh, but uh, who knows? Uh, rumors are rumors. Uh, and again, this stock has a huge short interest generally going on. Haven't looked at it lately, but uh, fairly decent, 20, 30, 40 percent, not uncommon at any one day to uh, see that kind of short interest in FireEye. But uh, up on decent volume today, but not out of any kind of trading range, and that uh, continues to be problematic. As we uh, said before, if uh, you're just tuning in, the S&P uh, was flat at uh, 2098. The NASDAQ closed again below 5,000. At uh, 49.81, the Dow was uh, basically flat at uh, 18.40 for the S&P uh, uh, for the uh, Dow. Uh, the uh, gold contract, of course, was the big mover, almost 2% higher out here today at 2014. Silver closed at 17.11, uh, and that was 3.5% uh, and crude at $60.24, and uh, natural gas was off a little bit. But uh, that kind of wraps up all the standard stuff. We had a few phone calls today during the uh, 2 o'clock hour, and I just uh, wanted to go back to it because it, there are a few of these stocks that look very interesting to me. Uh, Wells Fargo was one. We talked about the XLF and some of these. Uh, this is a stock that is very interesting because of the pattern of a triple top out here. But not only that, it uh, goes to show something I look at for a great deal and I actually wrote my own programs to go back and scan for these. That is, I want to see when volume drops to about 50% as it's beating away at either a high or a low, because that's generally a uh, fairly high incidence, maybe 80% of a trend change. Doesn't mean it's going to fall apart, but may mean that that is over. You had two good signals in Wells Fargo out here. The first one is that volume. I'm looking at the volume of the December 29th high, $55.94. That had 36 million shares. You went above it and closed below it with 26 million shares. Again, not quite half, so you may get one more retest. Well, we certainly got that retest on May 5th out here with 18 million shares. Now it's just kind of meandering out here, and you've got uh, 45, 50 days before earnings. I don't know if the wheels are going to fall off of it, but there's certainly not a lot of juice to go higher prices. And again, if you listen to my show at 2 o'clock, we are developing some new patterns in this marketplace that almost look like the mid-summers of uh, the early 2000s, and that is literally nothing moving for hours in the afternoon. Uh, today, we had about 200 million shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. When we ended up with... Uh, basically 3 billion uh, to go an hour with 200 million uh, from 2 to 3 o'clock shows you just how lackadaisical this market is in the middays. Everybody's looking for the next opportunity 
to uh, say that this market's going to the moon. One thing I do know is the option of market makers have not blinked since they went uh, pretty much on uh, uh, Delta Neutral, which was a week ago today. They have been looking at a range of somewhere between 2040 and somewhere uh, to, uh, or, yeah, 2040 to 2120 on the S&P cash. And uh, there's nothing out there to really change that. Uh, what else do we have? I've got a bunch of people emailing me, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, anything in the den? Just wanted to go through a few more. Uh, to look, LQ. Uh, this some of these newer IPOs out here, Quinta Holdings. Uh, this one is very interesting to me. They are a hotel, uh, of course, chain, if you're familiar with these. But, uh, again, we talk about how the trend may change. It may not mean that the wheels fall off the wagon. La Quinta is very interesting to me because of the March 25th high, where we had uh, basically 10 million shares. You've gotten into that, and you've not been able to break over it. You got into it with 2.5 million shares on the 30th of April. Uh, since then, it kind of pulled back a little bit, been going sideways out here, but certainly not a lot of volume as you hang up at these highs. Uh, GLD Options have a question in the den, and that is a good question. On the GLD, what we're looking at out here is uh, to, to, uh, uh, to, to uh, well, we're pretty much uh, eh, we're pretty much there. I think uh, the move basically says that uh, gold itself, uh, the GLD, slightly lower. But uh, gold should be uh, somewhere around uh, 1,200, at least for the GLD, is saying the underlying is going to be at about uh, 1,200 bucks. So we had a little pop past that. Maybe we get a little pullback here going into Friday. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're probably talking about plus or minus 15 bucks. So 2015 today uh, could be the short-term high. Doesn't mean we're pulling back more than a couple of bucks. Uh, but uh, you're well within the range out here. And maybe just a few too many people short gold to pop this up. Leg Mason is another one out here that seems to be giving some interesting signals to the top. I love these triple tops uh, when you get the, the finally the volume all coming out of it. Leg Plat, excuse me, L-E-G. Uh, this one's made basically three higher highs. Uh, you had a lot of volume try to push higher, but it came right back into the trading range on March 23rd. But I'm keying off the original January 13th of this year, high at $45.79 with 3 million shares. Peek through it. You had all the volume in the world. And I've been talking about this pattern for a while. And that is you break higher with volume and it comes and tucks right back into the trading range. You had another huge sign of strength back here on the 1st of May. Uh, with decent volume, 2.4 million shares, which still wasn't close to that 3 million shares we saw back on January 13th. Now it's kind of just uh, ticking back down here. The one thing you would really want to watch on this one is any close below uh, the $54.79 low. And uh, you know, we were about 30 cents uh, higher than that today. So keep an eye on that in the next little bit. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Let's go back to yesterday. I uh, want to talk about one other stock that gets me into Best Buy. We have enough time in the segment. Yeah, we do. Uh, Best Buy is very interesting to me. I've been in it a bunch of times here in the last month. I've been building some new PCs and buying power supplies. They've had a lot of sale on various stuff. In fact, I just bought a new Dell 23-inch touch monitor uh, for my Windows 10 machine. And it's sitting over here on another desk. But I've been enjoying playing with a touch screen that is 23 inches big. I think it go to 80 inches. But the question is whether or not we're going to see a great deal of business in any of these retail electronic consumers. Cons has been one of these stocks that's all over the board. And I wanted to kind of take a look, especially with retail uh, being and waxing, at least on clothes and a lot of other uh, things that we buy out here that this is kind of counterintuitive in that cons goes after people that don't have the enough cash to buy a washer or a dryer today. And uh, they're kind of like a, oh, 
uh, Aaron's Rents meets Best Buy is the best description I've had. I've never been in one. But this thing came down on horrifically huge bone crushing volume back on the 2nd of September last year on 14 million shares. Now it's back into this gap. And guess what? We've got volume today as it went up in here. 800,000 shares against, uh, what is that again? 14 million shares. One fourteenth of the volume? <sighs> Very scary, children. We'll be back in a minute. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. 
No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Each and every time that the dollar ticks higher, S&P wants higher price. Each and every time that the dollar is ticking lower, guess what? S&P wants lower price. Dollar, the metals, and the S&P are going tick for tick. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien. And this is Dave White sitting in for the one and only Tom O'Brien, your squeezably so soft host. Normally at the two o'clock hour, I have two newsletters. One is a daily trading vehicle. The other one is a longer term aimed at technology. And uh, we're in a couple of decent positions out there that I think one I think is going to pay off really well over time. Uh, the other one is uh, still in the money. So we still like that. But I'm getting ready to add a few more positions. So you can check out the Path of Least Resistance, which is my daily newsletter, and or the Tech Insider. And, of course, always catch me at, in the 4 o'clock hour of the Tom O'Brien Show, where we kind of talk the broad strokes of technology and uh, get more a little bit into the weeds of fundamentalism. But uh, I do digress. When uh, we were talking about Shake Shack out here, it's hard to look at this chart and not see at least some parallels in these retail uh, restaurant stocks that seem to be uh, saying the same thing. But again, uh, El Polo Loco was one uh, really driven a great deal, I think, by IBD and a lot of the discussions about that. This, of course, came way off like a lot of these. In fact, almost a 50 percent, 50 percent haircut from the top back down to the lows that we saw. When is that? Uh, December 31st. Uh, this thing has been slowly trying to make a 50% retracement. In fact, it got back to a 48, 49% retracement, kind of pulling back up here one more time. You may get one more test of this 29 area. The one thing you have to dislike is that there was some decent volume, 2 million shares, on that September, or, uh, December 31st low at 1985. And you'd have to think that you'd want that tested before you went uh, longer. But again, uh, this thing, you know, basically doubled in the first few days of trading. I uh, had some wild trading action after that. And eventually they just roll over on that right shoulder. But it ends up continuing to be an issue with these IPOs probably really selling the sizzle and not the steak. And it continues to be problematic for retail investors to chase some of these stocks. You, you know, you're basically up 50% off the lows on this particular one, uh, but uh, just don't see a lot of energy. You had a nice gap up on earnings back here on the 13th of March, uh, and your volume came in. You just haven't had a lot since then. It would not be uncommon to uh, at least get a retest of this. It's just around that $20 level from December 31st before you'd want to get into this one. Uh, this is kind of the poor man's CMG, I guess, is what they're talking about it. CMG, of course, uh, a lot of these companies look like they've had a fairly decent top out. Now, Chipotle, when we look at it, is one of the more interesting ones. They're having at least some issues getting uh, and selling their uh, non-genetically modified foodstuffs, but in a huge trading range of about 127 bucks from the gap up in that uh, what 590 range all the way up to kind of a tick high uh, at 727. Now we're kind of on the lower end of this thing and it's moving kind of sideways. The question is what, especially with the bird flu, uh, is the cost of getting these uh, just regular chickens going to be problematic? Uh, they also have arguments out here about whether or not if you have high fructose corn syrup from genetically modified corn, does that qualify? So getting in a little bit of the weeds out here, but these restaurant stocks continue to look rather weak. 
And surprisingly enough, what we found out from retail numbers this morning is of the money that uh, consumers that are, they are spending, uh, it is a great deal of what they do have is retail restaurants. Uh, maybe this isn't high enough on the scale to really register, but another doji out here, you've got to figure that you're going to get this 607 low tested that had huge volume on October 21st. So we're not that far away from it in Chipotle. Uh, maybe this is a bigger trading range, but you need to have this tested on some very decent and light volume. The the Probably the most prob problematic part of Chipotle is the gap up had 2.2 million shares and this high volume low out here on October 21st had 2.2 million shares. So it's been one that I've avoided because you don't have a clear and unambiguous signal on this one. Uh, what else do we have going on out here? Uh, to, to, to EGY, I wanted to see how some of these stocks that had been testing these lows uh, had been reacting. Uh, I brought this one up on my show, I think on Wednesday uh, last week. It may have been Wednesday or Friday last week. Uh, wanted to really see whether or not any of these stocks had any juice in them. Uh, this one, of course, Valco, EGY was uh, it's a penny stock, $2.12 on April 1st of 2015, 5.7 million shares. Came in, tested its low, went below it, closed back above it, did everything you should have, and uh, spiked up to 257. This may need some more consolidation, but there are more than a few of these stocks uh, that are doing this on the highs and on the lows. Uh, to, 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 what else did we have? There was one out here that I was looking for. Maybe I will find it. Uh, to, 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 yeah, Lake Mason. Uh, to, 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 to. Let's take a quick look at Cisco. I know they're not doing anything out here, but we'll see if we can see anything in the chart. I haven't really looked at it. I mean, this is in a bigger trading range from about 25 bucks to 30 bucks. Uh, you know, the energy on this last leg up is decent. Uh, it is not anything stronger. So you would probably still say that you're in some kind of trading range from about 30 bucks down to 2660. Uh, That's the March 29, uh, 26th low. So, you know, you've got a big choppy range out here. The SMHs are, I'm seeing enough and enough charts in this sector to get me thinking that we also have a big move coming in this. And again, if you go back uh, to our discussions that we've had on the Tom O'Brien show in the Tech Insider uh, hour of Apple and how just how many of these stocks that we are getting uh, that are having false breaks and then pullbacks uh, out the same side. Semiconductor stocks do suggest we're going to have some big movement in probably the next five days. This thing has go, gone all the way to the end of its asymmetrical triangle. And when we look at Apple, we see exactly what happened to it. Uh, when it tried to break out. And a lot of these stocks, just the same. Even with volume, uh, when you get these very, very uh, huge decreases in volatility uh, with uh, lower highs and lower lows that go sideways for a while, when they break out, it's almost always about 80% time a head fake. So I would not be surprised to see either head fake higher or lower in the SMHs that then reverses and comes back uh, to the levels that they have. So keep an eye on those patterns. Keep an eye on the skies. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Remember to sell when you can, not when you have to. Thanks, everyone.